Hi there, this is Ms. Schneider, Chief Strategist of MarketGage.com, coming to you end of the trading day, April 9th. A lot of anticipation about CPI tomorrow. That is a number I'm not really concerned with. Quite honestly, 3.4% is the expectation. Clearly, if it's much higher or much lower, that will impact the market. But that's temporary to a lot of what's happening in the futures market. We're starting to see commodities really outperform the S&P 500 in a big way. And that is a trend that we believe is only just getting going. But I want to start a little bit here more sober because the dollar is a part of it. And of course, what happens to the yen will be very much impacted by what happens if we have a war, let's say, as things escalate over in the Middle East or the debt that we're experiencing around the world and particularly in the U.S. continues to go out of control or any type of chaotic situation would most likely be good for the dollar, not so great for the yen, although we've seen that go in reverse. So what we're seeing right here is exactly what is a theme if you're looking at a lot of the different sectors within the market itself, whether it's semiconductors, the S&P 500, NASDAQ, transportation, retail, they're all in this massive level of consolidation, which makes it extremely interesting, just like we had shown gold in this massive consolidation until it finally took out 2100. This may not be as interesting as we're seeing here in the USDJPY. It is nonetheless more of a near term consolidation, if you will. So looking at this chart, what you see here is that we are moving straight across here with a kind of good resistance at around 150.180. Remember, this is the dollar ahead of the yen. And at the same time, we have major support really as we're coming down to, let's call it 151. So we're in an 80 cent range in this, which means that you should technically follow it regardless of the way that it ranges, or I should say that the way the range breaks. And as you can now see, what the chart is showing you here is I've added in the not only moving averages, which comes down at a 150 in terms of the 50-day moving average, but I've added the momentum indicator because while this is actually going sideways, momentum is indicating some relative weakness in the dollar relative to the yen. And here, where we're just slightly above the 50-day moving average and we're much more above it in the price, one can say not only is that one evidence of a bearish divergence, but the fact is, is that the 200 here is above the 50. Here, the 50 is above the 200. That puts this in a weaker phase, which also is another bearish divergence. So we really want to see what happens as these ranges break. So I'm really keen on showing you this chart, even more interesting to me than the dollar yen. And this is the dollar Swiss franc. Again, the dollar being the lead indicator here against the Swiss franc. And we could certainly see that we're in some other sideways consolidation pattern with 0.977 being the top. And very clearly here, point, let's call it 90 being the bottom. So that's something to consider. This is actually still in a good bullish momentum, but you can see here that we're starting to wane a little bit in momentum. So what we're looking for in this one in particular, independent of what happens with the yen, is if this breaks down under that 90 level. That is, if the dollar weakens against the Swiss franc on that 90 level. We believe that this could make its first move pretty handily down to the 50-day moving average at 88.58. And at that time, we also might see a mean reversion in momentum, which means that these dots would cross below the Bollinger Band, indicating that it's showing you at least a very short-term sell side. So those are the two currency pairs I wanted to show you. Let's move on to gold. Okay, no one can deny this beautiful parabolic move that we're seeing right now in gold. This is the cash chart. And again, just showing you the level of consolidation that I'm talking about. You can have a minor consolidation like this that has a move once it breaks down or above or below it. That's not very powerful. Or you can have a consolidation like we saw here that went on literally from this time period at the beginning of December to this time period at really basically the beginning of March and broke out. And that's where we're at right now. But that's only one indication. So at this particular time, people are saying, 
saying, where can gold go? And we don't know, right? 2,500, 3,000 potentially gold is flying in the face of a lot of uncertainty. And in spite of yields that have stayed higher for longer, dollar that has still remained, as you just saw in the two currency charts, relatively sh strong, although flat to current levels. And really, I don't believe has anything to do with the fear of inflation. This is more uh, geopolitical risks, if I had to really take a major guess at to what's spooking this, along with a tremendous amount of accumulation by central banks throughout the world. So that's the fundamentals. So let's take a look at the technicals. If you match up this high right here, which we can see is at 2,353, it also match matches the top of the candle that we had today which also comes in at 253. So that makes that for tomorrow an extremely pivotal number. Above 200, 2,200, excuse me, 2,353, you have to have a bullish bias. And below, I wouldn't necessarily say a bearish bias, but if you looked at the momentum chart, which I'm not going to show you, there's no real concern in momentum other than it's been very strong and going sideways, which means it has room for a correction without getting into any kind of bearish divergence on momentum like we just saw with the dollar. So that tells me that even if we had to move down to 20, 2300 that would probably not be so surprising if we can hold above that 2353 now is there a couple of stops along the way yes we have 2330 is one support area um, but really I would say under that 2353 I wouldn't be surprised to see 2300 because we do probably have a lot of retail longs in there some of which might be calling for some kind of top prematurely which we don't believe in now on the flip side of course today's high in the market was 2363 we get through the three 2353 and then the 2363 i would say to keep your sights really now more we don't have any chart points to look at we're in new all-time high territory so from a psychological standpoint probably your next target would be somewhere around 2397 to 2400 so as you can see looking back historically the last time we were at these levels in silver we're talking 2021 and of course we know what happened in 2021 everything went crazy including silver in fact it became a meme stock for a second so now look at that we are right up to those levels basically this 2815 look how it it is actually right in line with so many different highs and even though we had a couple of intraday moves it was really basically turned out to be pretty good resistance. So that tells me now if we get through it in terms of support, if it holds this $28.15 silver, looks like we're going to head up to $28.93. And then, of course, if we go higher there, we're looking at uh, $29.95. I mean, this is the type of parabolic moves that commodities traders dream about and haven't seen in years and years. Now, if it can't get through $28.15, of course, then we have to look at some other areas. $27.60 has been some relative support. I like support a little bit better here. Here, if we're looking at this level at 2720 and if it breaks down under 2720 we can go back to these levels right here which would be somewhere around 2615 maybe with a little bit of a stop here at this low right here which is 2670 so that's kind of it and of course we get through $30 which was the last time we were there was all the way back here in February of 2021 then $35, $40 is not off the table. But at this point, like I said, nice parabolic move, not as clean as gold, but yet could start catching up to gold. And of course, silver to gold, the ratio is showing more inflation on the way as well, at least when it comes to precious metals. Now, if we move on to natural gas, what's so interesting is this is not cash, right? This is the spot month. And we've already cleared that 50-day moving average that I've been talking about that we haven't been through in some time. And momentum also went through the 50-day moving average and looks like it's about to take out the Bollinger Band. So after clearing the 50-day moving average, we got a confirmation today, but it was an inside day to yesterday's price action. So in the futures, of course, we're going to be looking at this level. But if we move over to the cash market, you can see that we have not actually cleared the 50-day moving average yet. So 
This is why it's good to look at the underlying, first of all, and the cash price. And so what we want to see now, it looks like it's getting close, but we want to see it get a couple of closes now above this 50 or above this 183 level. And if we do, then that would be a phase change and a move that we have not seen since January. So, you know, not that long, but at least four months uh, of, of, of movement down that could be reversing into more of a bullish type of move. So through 183, a couple of days in a row, we'd be then be looking up at $2, of course. We get through $2, we'd be looking up at around 212 and so on and so forth. But it looks to me like just on the size of this pattern right here, I would be looking for a target at about 240 before I would reassess. If we can't get through this 50-day moving average, then I would probably just leave this alone. So again, I want to quickly show you, this is crude oil, this is not cash, we'll go to the cash chart, but you can see you had a golden cross here, and yet you can also see the momentum is waning, so we don't want to see a mean reversion by, you know, otherwise, I mean, unless you're bearish oil, that would certainly mean that maybe we've kind of maxed out here above this $85 a barrel, uh, we couldn't quite get through 90 in the cash, and in this case, not even through 87.65. So keep your eye on that 85. I think that's a big swing even in the cash market. We'll have a look and think about the fact that the momentum has come down. So we really need to have some kind of a reversal higher in order to continue to see any kind of up movement in oil. And I'm not saying that means it's bearish. More importantly, it would mean that we could see another period of sideways consolidation. And if we move to the cash charts, you can see exactly pretty much the same kind of thing happening here. Uh, we made this peak high. We didn't quite get, it almost looks identical to the chart I just showed you, but we didn't quite get past that 87.80 to get up to, through 88 and up to 90, which to me would have been a, a more uh, reasonable target after this explosive move higher above 80. So we may need to just chop around and do some more work. Could be waiting for CPI numbers. But nonetheless, in terms of levels, I would say if it gets through 87.28, that would be enough evidence for a bullish bias. And if it breaks down under today's low, which really was like 85.40, then it's possible that we'd have to see a move back down to, first of all, this level here, which is at 84.90, and then from there, possibly at around 84.20. Um, through that 87.80, We'd have the next place to look at would be 87.90. And then from there, we'd have to go back again into some evidence of what we've seen in the past. And what we've seen in the past is the last time we were up at these levels before we sold off, that high was up at 89.30. So that would probably be my next target. And last, we're going to look at the SPY or the SPX in this case. This is not the cash. We'll go to the cash chart, but I'm showing this view for momentum purposes. We did have a mean reversion here right at the highs. That's why this real motion indicator is so reliable and almost predictive. But you always, of course, need to see the price confirmation of that. But with that new all-time high in reversal pattern, we've not been able to get back above it. That makes that level very, very important in terms of our consolidation over 5,000. 263. Till we get through these highs right here, which is at 5,273, we have to say that we can either chop sideways in a consolidation pattern or with that bearish divergence, possibly, possibly, and I think CPI may have something to do this, work our way a little bit lower. So I would first be looking at the support really right here at 5180. That's an important level, 5188 to 5180. The next would be, of course, today's low at 5160. The next level from there would be 5140. And we break down under there. Then I think where we could actually go would be possibly, and maybe even healthy if we do that, is a move down to around 5050, which comes in eh, basically in this area right here. I'll see you all next week. Thanks so much for watching and bye for now.